going to hand over to Dan for our first, uh, sorry, to Nathan for our first presentation on defining a digital future for teaching, learning and assessment. Over to you, Nathan. Thank you very much for that introduction. And uh, hi, everyone. Um, nice to see you here. So um, surprisingly, my co-presenter, Richard, ah, he's just joining now. Marvellous. So we will, I'm sure Richard will be bumped up to a presenter in a minute and he'll be able to... Yeah, we can do that, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, sorry I'm late, I must have been in the wrong room, but here I am. Um, so let's get started then. Um, so this is a um, summary of the research we've been doing at the University of York um, on um, really sort of future gazing, looking at the digital requirements for our student body f f over the next uh, 10 years. So we'd like to share that with you and make this an interactive session as well. So in terms of the session, um, ambitiously, what we're going to try and do is summarise our research, what we've done so far, and then open it up to get your institutional sort of uh, reflections um, to see how transferable our findings are. And uh, Twitter is an option, but we can also do this within the, um, the Collaborate environment as well. And then we'll try and sort of draw the threads together. So that's in a nutshell what we're trying to do. Very briefly then, um, I'll just give a summary of um, the rationale for the work we've been doing. So uh, last um, autumn term, which seems years ago now, um, November actually, I was approached by our academic registrar to sort of um, start, kickstart a research project looking at um, future digital requirements for teaching and learning and assessment over a 10 year period. So really taking us up to 2030. And the rationale for that was um, we recognise as an institution, technology and, and digital services being strategically really important and we wanted to look at this as a cross-cutting theme as part of our overall institutional strate strategy renewal. So um, the work we're doing here is really important in terms of sort of feeding into the, the statement of how we want teaching and learning and assessment to look at um, York for the future and to set out a roadmap um, accordingly. So what Nathan and I did then was to work with our respective students' unions, undergrad and postgrad, to um, get focus groups together to talk to um, to our students. And um, although the numbers there aren't great, um, we only managed to talk to 50 students. Um, these were rich discussions, quite detailed focus group um, sessions, and we intentionally try to talk to all stakeholder groups so not just our campus based undergraduate students but also postgraduate taught and phd but equally um, importantly um, our, our part-time flexible learners and and distance online learners to discuss their their experiences currently of the digital services and also what they foresaw as important for um the development of those services over a 10-year period um, and out of that, we, we um, got some transcripts and we reviewed those independently and then came together through a mapping ex exercise. We picked out um, sort of common themes which seem to be coming up again and again in those discussions. And, and where we could, we've also linked our findings to um, emerging sector sort of uh, literature and developments. And, and of course, there's the excellent paper by Barnett on conditions of flexibility, as well as the GIST work that we are familiar with too. Now, we're not going to go through the whole of our research findings, but we have provided a YouTube um, video, which uh, the link is there, and um, that's um, available now if you wanted to listen to us, the full summary of our research. But I'll hand over now to Nathan to give a very brief summary of the, the key dimensions that we came up with. Okay, thanks, Richard. So in terms of the initial themes we found from the focus group data, these are shown in this diagram. So on the left side, you can see uh, there are two themes there relating to current challenges. So those were inconsistencies in system processes and gaps in service provision. So for example, this is where, you know, where, two, where students need to use two systems as part of the same process, but they don't speak to each other, or where students can't access some form of information, such as news from another department, but that interests them, but they can't get to it. So those are current issues that the students talked about. On the right hand side, these are expectations for the future. So this is about things uh, being integrated uh, in the digital infrastructure, um, things being flexible, so flexible in terms of learning, how to engage, um, but also choice over what to study can be more flexible, and also expectations about networking, community building, including inclusive learning. And lastly, lifelong learning and learner entitlements. 
Um, as Richard mentioned, we, we, we talk about those themes in more detail in the YouTube video. So if you'd like to follow up with that later, you can. Um, when we found those seven themes, we also noticed things cutting, cutting across them. So this slide shows, if you like, meta themes. So um, flexibility was, was at the heart of what people were talking about, definitely. And personalization, being able to tailor things to your own needs and wants. And that community and networking, um, the sense of um, identity and being connected with each other and the university. And also employability support and in alumni entitlements. So what we've done, um, we, I'm going to hand back to Richard in a minute to kick off a discussion activity on this. We'd actually like to focus on those four um, meta themes, really, because, um, yes, as I said, this, this cuts across the, the initial themes that we found. So I'm going to hand back to Richard now to kick off the discussion activity. Thanks, Nathan. Um, so yes, I mean, what we want to do is test out the um, how transferable our findings are to your institutional context. So um, for those that um, are keen on Twitter, um, we, um, we've created some hashtags for you now to use and, and, and indeed to sort of carry on the conversation after this session um, for you to um, contribute your thoughts. But um, we'd like to explore each of those dimensions and um, maybe you could pick one um, now or one or two and sort of add your thoughts um, on what your institutional take is on this. But as Nathan said, you know, the flexibility um, dimension, I, I think what that our feedback has suggested is um, that it, it, we need to think again about uh, redefine our sort of sense of what it means for students to be present in teaching encounters. There's a bit, sort of big Ferrari now about attendance, student attendance at sort of physical encounters, but is that rather a passe outdated now? Um, do we need to, to think about, about a more sort of flexible uh, form of attendance and presence in, in teaching? To what extent should we be uh, providing students with um, uh, the digital systems uh, to enable them to control the way they engage with learning and, and indeed the timing of um, teaching and assessment activities? So that's the flexibility side. Personalization is could be much more radical than simply just um, uh, being able to personalize information um, that, um, from the university, from the department, and uh, but also, you know, provide students with the scope to build their own curriculum um, and gain credit um, beyond the formal uh, program of study um, to include extra interdisciplinary study, and maybe to go even further, give them the tools and the support to actually co-create their own sort of learning materials. And then there's the, the networking side that that was a very sort of um, common theme which came across uh, with all the groups um, this sense of being almost confined by their study program or their discipline but wanting to be able to sort of create their own communities of um, scholarship and inquiry on the fly um, right across you know um, disciplinary um, the range of disciplines and and delivery modes and this was particularly pertinent for those flexible learners, distance learners that couldn't get on campus but wanted to engage with the university um, as a whole. And then the lifelong learning equally, um, this sense of um, students feeling that the relationship with a university should not end um, after uh, the completion of, um, after graduation, the completion of a study programme, but those learning entitlements and services should continue. So does that resonate with um, you and your context? Then, and then the final hashtag there is one, a wildcard one, obviously, for things that we haven't thought about that may be more pertinent um, in, to your context. So please feel free now to have a go at uh, Twitter and um, pen your thoughts there. And um, also, if you if you prefer to use the chat box, we can sort of pick up comments there. So um, what we will do is we'll give this now sort of six minutes. So we'll take this up to 20 past and then we will um, see what we've got then in terms of comments and then we will sort of wrap up the session. Okay, some great discussion going on in the chat. Um, Nathan, I don't know if you want to um, sort of sum up some of the points that have been raised there.
but it's reassuring to see that um, there is this sort of issue about entitlements as, and, and, and as well as sort of presence and what that means for students, particularly uh, in, in online courses. Um, and as Peter says, this whole concept of identity um, and how that's expressed and supported is, is critical to learning. So that, that does require um, some rethinking as well. OK, well, there's some really good discussion going on there. Please do continue that or um, feel free to um, after the session. And this is what we're really hoping for, that um, we continue this dialogue with you um, after the session through Twitter. So those those hashtags are out there and we've, we've started to sort of kick off a discussion there. But we'll move on. And um, in terms of um, our perspectives on what we think the implications are of all of this for the University of York. Um, obviously, one of, sort of the sort of key practical steps that we're going to need to take is to think about our whole sort of infrastructure and systems integration. These are the building blocks, the basics of, of getting a digital ecology of systems working together, providing this sort of interconnected set of services that um, uh, students need. So that's a basic uh, re requirement, but also, we need to think about in a much more joined up way the um, how the virtual and physical learning spaces that students engage with um, uh, join together in a seamless fashion and rather than see it as a dichotomy between the two. And I know a number of institutions have um, been working on this for many years now. The, the whole concept of the sticky campus is, is well established. But um, I think now we've moved into this, this whole new sort of era, um, sort of post uh, well, dur during the sort of the COVID um, pandemic, in, in terms of the shift to online, um, we need we need to think long term now about um, the complementary way in which our, our online services match what what we might offer in, uh, on the physical campus. And uh, part of that institutional thinking at York has already started with the, with our whole sort of philosophy about dual delivery of teaching. But coupled with this, there is this this sort of rethinking process for what we mean by student engagement and. There's been a lot of debate, at, certainly on campus at, at York, about um, over sort of um, previous years about student attendance and what that means. And now we need to sort of, I think, um, update that discussion to think about true hybrid learning and and think about um, how we support sort of both remote um, and physical presence. And and again, this is something that um, th through my own travels um, in Australia, I'm well aware of um, how hybrid sort of sessions, teaching, and, and more flexible. Um, teaching has been well established for a number of years. Maybe this is an area in which um, the UK as a sector needs to to catch up. Certainly it's something for, for, for York to think about. Um, and thirdly, another sort of area that we have um, looked at is, is is a very basic one about um, being able to exploit the, um, the emerging opportunities that are um, digital services will provide us and and this re refers not just to staff and 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 to their skills and their um, aptitude their digital fluency to um, uh, be able to use um, tools effectively and to ped pedagogically design in sort of activities but it, it but also students as well we shouldn't overestimate the the, the skills that, that that they need and the uh, the insights to sort of um, function appropriately within this um, this environment. So those are three of the areas that um, we're looking to develop and then play back um, into the, the institutional strategy for digital learning. And that moves us on to our sort of f final slide, which sets out future directions. Um, what we're hoping to do with all of this research is, well, scale it up, first of all. We admittedly have only worked with um, 50 students, so we need to, to test the propositions and rec recommended actions that we've come up with with a broader set of respondents. We are planning to do that through um, uh, more survey questionnaire uh, instruments to, in order to scale up, get a, a broader, a greater response rate. We then need to uh, report back those findings to our institutional strategy working group, um, which, um, with the aim of helping to sh shape the, the institutional vision and implementation plans. And uh, the key, um, obviously, we're not looking for suddenly a, a radical step change in in what we do. I think that the, the secret um, and, and to, to sort of addressing this is to do it in a, in a, a, within a culture of continuous improvement and sustainable change. The pace in which um, uh, digital technologies are evolving and the, the pedagogical models around that are ones which we 
we can't anticipate what there will be in in 10 years time i think that is far too challenging uh, an undertaking but what we can do is sort of set a sort of a culture and develop the competences uh, for, for staff um, in order to embrace opportunities as they arise and the final point is really one for you which is you know um, to, to join with us and um, and engage with collaborative research and it'd be really interesting if you're doing this sort of thing yourself um, in terms of um, future gazing uh, through dialogue with with your own students whether we could benchmark findings uh, with other um, higher education institutions so we'd be really interested in that okay that um, is a whistle stop tour of our presentation and thanks for all the sort of wonderful um, contributions in the chat which we will sort of look at after this session i'll just um, finish up with the um, references and um, I'd like to sort of just pick out that there is some very good work that is going on in the sector and Sean Bain, um, Sean Bain's work at uh, Edinburgh she presented a really interesting paper on the, um, the work that Edinburgh is doing at um, this year's network learning conference so I would recommend that and there is a paper by myself um, uh, well a um, presentation um, which was presented at just connect more which sets out our dual teaching and um, plans for this year that you might be interested in but i'll leave it there and if there are any questions then this is the time yep we have got um definitely a few minutes where we can take questions and answers if you'd rather ask it over the microphone please raise your hand um and we will be able to enable your microphone alternatively you can um just put it in the chat box and we can read it and get back to you You can see there's a lot of conversations about recordings and the way to do that in sessions. Okay, well, I don't think there's any direct questions coming through. So that just leaves me to say thank you so much to the both of you for an absolutely wonderful presentation. And if we'd all like to find the chat function in our um, emoji, or you can write just clap if you want to, and then that would be absolutely great to say thank you so much for that presentation. Lots of applause coming in there. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, everyone. And uh, as I say, the, the Twitter is, um, is out there, so please, you know, contribute your thoughts and uh, do get in touch if you want to do some collaborative research with us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Nathan. Okay, so shall we move on to our next session so we'll just stop that recording um and we shall move on